I'm I'm very very concerned about the fact that people in Hong Kong seem to think that it's over, and um, there have been a lot of whispers about uh, the political repressiveness in Hong Kong being actually even more repressive than in mainland China. So the direction of travel and the direction that Hong Kong is going in is deeply concerning, and, and we, it's really a cautionary tale for Taiwan. Yeah, I mean uh, that was r- literally the next jump I was making is Taiwan considers themselves to be a sovereign nation. Uh, China considers them to be, a, you know, uh, a province. Uh, I think it would be the word they would probably use or part of mainland China. Um, but the Taiwanese are a proud people. What Do we think that China is going to do to Taiwan what they just did to Hong Kong? Well, we know that uh, China considers Taiwan as part of their sovereign territory. And we know that China has been, in recent weeks, uh, engaging in a buildup of amphibious military equipment in its southern uh, coastline near uh, near Taiwan, uh, right off the right across the strait uh, from the the South China Sea. So, uh, I think I think those two facts alone are are pretty concerning. And. China, Taiwan, uh, you know, Hong Kong, a finance center, uh, a, a, an international hub for travel and commerce that can easily be moved, uh, you know, uh, relatively speaking. Taiwan, in terms of semiconductors and chip manufacturing, not easily replicated in other places. So maybe you could speak to, you know, the fact that Australia, Japan, and Singapore and every other country in um, at Korea, every other country in the region is chomping at the bit to get expats out of Hong Kong, give them uh, asylum, a visa, citizenship, a path to citizenship. That is, uh, you know, what the free market is doing, which in one way is, I think, a huge punishment to China. Does China care that if, if they lose that finance center and they lose that? Because it p- appears that they do not care about losing what was the the finance capital of the region? China thinks in very long time horizons, and the Chinese Communist Party cares first and foremost uh, with retaining power and with protecting the, le- the legitimacy of their government. Mm. That's why they've invested so much time, effort, and resources in propping up their economy, in misrepresenting a lot of their economic data, and in doing a lot of the various things, um, uh, from setting up uh, an incredibly sophisticated surveillance state that has CCTV cameras with facial recognition everywhere, that's de-anonymizing the internet inside of China, to preserve their grip over political power. And Hong Kong thumbing their nose at China even though it's just a million, two million, three million people, uh, depending on how you, you count the region, uh, involved in the protests. And, 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 and they look at that as an existential problem in that it could infect the mainland and that they needed to squash it now. Is, is that yes. the correct interpretation of why they did this? Well, the power of the example, uh, fundamentally, um, this is about the legitimate about democracy undermining the example of democracy undermining the legitimacy of autocratic governments uh democracies are premised on the idea that authority based on um a single person on arbitrary decisions taken by a single person is illegitimate so well-functioning prosperous democracies will always undermine the basic argument for autocracy the basic bargain that china has trying to has been trying to advance to its own people is yes we're an autocratic country but look how much technological and you know they would argue human development progress we've made over the recent years we've lifted people out of poverty we've built so many roads and dams and bridges and they try to show material progress through very large infrastructure projects um in order to justify their holdover power and in order to justify their repressive regime and they're not wrong they have been incredibly effective at moving people from poverty and not having electricity or water to having apartments and having jobs and and creating a middle class that just 
is the middle class in in China is larger, I correct me if I'm wrong, than the entire United States now. So as a market, and as, a, you know, a standard of living, they do have the high ground to say that. And the counter argument that people put up there is, hey, this is this is a country that's existed for much longer than democracies in America have, obviously not as long as democracy back to the Greeks. Um, or, or is that right? Uh, yeah, I mean, the 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 idea here is that you would uh, you're getting such a huge benefit that unless you're just a troublemaker, you have nothing to worry about. The standard of living is going to keep going up. How long can that narrative exist? Before you know, how long can people be oppressed and watch people go to jail because they have a private WeChat group or they read a book or they got a VPN? Because it seems to me that China could implode and have a revolution at any moment. If they're fact, if they if we get kicked out of China and we don't make iPhones there and they can't sell iPhones, I I think they have a revolution. Am I wrong or crazy? The the weakness of autocracies is that because they're so much more centralized than democracies, they're inherently also more brittle, and that's why uh, Xi Jinping has placed such a single minded focus on. Uh, learning from the lessons of history of the collapse of the Soviet Union to avoid the same fate.